Hey guys, CB Super. Today I'm gonna to go over basic rotoscoping. We are going to rotoscope this building front here so that we can put maybe some text behind it so it appears that the text is actually behind the building. This is of course just a regular drone shot. It's a fairly easy problem. Footage itself actually tracks from left to right, but it does change in perspective. We can see that this portion over here elongates quite a bit as it moves around to the side here. If I was to rate this in difficulty from one to 10, I'd probably say this is a two or maybe a three in difficulty. It's actually not gonna be too bad. Let's go ahead and jump over to Fusion. All right, here we are inside of Fusion. I'm just going to load this media into the left viewer and the media out will be in the right viewer. So the very first thing that we always wanna do when rotoscoping, we wanna review the footage and analyze our problems. So I don't see any motion blur. We could probably use a little bit of tracking in order to track the front of this building to make our masks stick. And the only real problem that we have is there's a little bit of perspective shift. So we know that this portion over here will probably need to be scaled in some shape or fashion. So let's really quickly talk about a couple of different ways that we can actually use masks to rotoscope something. When we're rotoscoping, what we're actually doing is we're separating foreground images or footage from their background. Sometimes we may wanna cut the image out completely and put it into a new background. But in this instance, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select a foreground object, I'm going to remove it and then place it back on top of itself so that we can place something behind it. So if you haven't already watched my basic masking video, you're probably gonna wanna go watch that video first because I'm not gonna be going over in the detail that I went over in that last video. So 90% of the time when I'm going to roto out some kind of custom shape, I'm gonna be using the polygon mask tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring out a polygon mask and show you a couple different ways to actually mask things out real quickly. With the polygon node selected, I'm gonna go ahead and just make a quick selection here to demonstrate the different ways that you can actually mask things out. So if we look at the polygon mask, we notice that everything in black is transparent, everything white is opaque. That's how DaVinci recognizes the alpha channels. So let's go ahead and plug this directly into the media in node and we know that the media in node can accept an effect mask because it has a little blue triangle so if I drop this polygon directly onto the media in node we'll see that we have cut out our foreground object but we've lost everything in the background now if this is what you're going for well then that is how you can do it this isn't generally how I'll work because it's a little bit more destructive than I like to use but the nice thing about fusion is that nothing is really destructive you can always go back and you could fix it so let's go ahead and remove that and I'm just gonna move it over. There's a couple other ways that we can actually mask this out. We know that we're gonna be wanting to use this media node later. We're gonna to wanna to actually use the same footage as the background and as the foreground images. We're gonna to need to maintain this media in node in its normal format. So originally what we would do is we would actually add a matte control after the media in node. So now when I plug in this polygon node into the matte control, you'll see that it actually plugged it in as an effect mask, but that's actually not where we wanna plug it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Instead, I wanna plug it into the garbage matte. So if you grab the output from the polygon, you can drop it directly on the garbage mat, which is the lower right mat. That will work, that'll cut it out. It's a little small and it's probably kind of difficult to do. So what you can do is you can actually hold down the option or alt key on your keyboard when you grab your output for the polygon mask and you drop it on the mat control and then select garbage mat from the drop down. Now it'll do the exact same thing. Conversely, you can also just grab the output with your right mouse button, hold it, and then just drop it on the mat control and then select garbage mat. So that works. And the nice thing is now we still have this media in node that we can use to superimpose this later. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a polygon node to make a selection or cut out part of the building. Then I need to take that part of the building. So I'm gonna go ahead and invert this for right now. Let's go ahead and bring in a merge node really quickly and I'll show you how this is gonna work. So I'm gonna want this media in to be in the background and I'm gonna want that cutout portion to be in the foreground. So if I do that, I go ahead and load this up. Now we can see that it looks the exact same like nothing's been changed. But if I go ahead and bring in a text now and I place this text in the background, so let's go ahead and bring another merge node and place it directly into the pipeline that is not connecting to the mass node. And now the text appears to be behind the building. Obviously we haven't done the entire mask yet, so the effect is kind of ruined. But now you understand the premise behind rotoscoping something out so that you can use it as a selection, either to cut it out completely and put it on a new background or to put something behind it. 
So that's the basics of rotoscoping. Let's go ahead and delete all that. And let's go ahead and show another way to connect this mask. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the mat control. So the way that I actually prefer to do it is to actually bring in a merge node and bring in a new black background. So in this black background, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the alpha where it says one, and I'm going to slide it all the way to the left so it says zero. What we've done is we've taken that background and we've turned it into a completely blank background of the same size as the comp. So a merge node does one thing. It merges a foreground footage image or object on top of a background image footage or object. So I'm going to take the background and I'm going to put it in as the background into the merge node. And I'm gonna take that media in and I'm gonna plug that into the foreground. So my media in is foreground, my background is background. And now when I load this in, it looks the exact same. But the only difference is now I can take this polygon and I can drop it in as an effect mask and now it cuts it out. And the nice thing about merge nodes is that they will preserve the transparency or the alpha channel information. You can also use the mat control like this, but I think that the merge node is a little bit easier. All right, so that's the third way to do it. There's actually yet another way. And to be honest, I'm a little bit biased in this next method. Let me go ahead and delete this. So I wasn't really happy with any of the methods. So of course I created my own tool that would help me with rotoscoping. It's called the CB Roto node. So with the media selected, I'm going to shift space, type in Roto, and let's load this up. So by default, it's set to red, and the red lets you know that there is no mask connected. With the Roto selected, you can go ahead and click on the polygon tool and start putting down points in order to make your Roto. And here's the nice thing about this is that now we can actually see where we're putting our masks. Let's say we want to make several masks here. We can see exactly where each one of these masks is. We can also get really close here and we can make these changes. This is somewhat similar to how Photoshop does its masks. And I really was surprised that there wasn't a function that was already built in Fusion to do this. So here we have the Roto node. And the great thing about this is when you're all done making your masks, in order to activate it so that you actually have an alpha channel, all you have to do is take the Roto Sys slider on the right and just move it all the way to the right. And now it works just as if you were using one of those other methods. And the nice thing is you can always switch back and forth and you can change the color if you want to, to maybe something that is a little bit easier to see against whatever color background you're using. You can change the opacity to drop it down a lot, or you can make it completely opaque if you want. And it's really easy to use. So once we connect this to the media out, we can actually jump back over to the edit tab and we can see how well our tracks are holding onto the actual building. Of course, we haven't actually animated it, so it's not gonna hold right now. So now we can see that as we move it, the track obviously moves off of it, but we're gonna fix that here in just a minute. So that's the CB Roto node. You don't have to use it. I do find that it makes doing rotoscoping a little bit easier, at least for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of this and let's actually get into rotoscoping. All right, so now that we understand how to rotoscope, let's go ahead and tackle how we're gonna rotoscope this building. Because this building doesn't move, but the camera moves, we know that we're gonna to have to break this up into pieces because the front of the building is not going to change very much, but the side of the building is, and that's because the perspective changes on the side of the building. So let's go ahead and break this up into two or three masks. We also want to include these antennas. Those antennas will probably need their own masks. I think one way that might be a little bit easier is to actually track the front of the building using one of the tracker nodes. Like many of you, I'm on the free version, so when I bring in a tracker, I have three options, but this first option is actually hidden behind the paywall. So unless I want to purchase the studio version, which is actually a really good deal for what you get, but because most of you are on the free version, I will continue to use the free version. So let's go ahead and find a way around using the camera tracker. So shift space, type in tracker. For the first step, I'm actually going to use the planar tracker. So here is the planar tracker. We're not gonna to go too in depth in the planar tracker, but what I need to do is I need to connect the media in node into the planar tracker. And then I'm gonna load the planar tracker into the viewer. I wanna make sure that I'm starting off at frame zero, but if you're starting off at frame 10, what you'll need to do is you will need to set your reference time by hitting set. I'm gonna be using frame zero, so I'm gonna set my frame reference time to zero. And by default, it's set to zero. So if you just start from zero, you won't really have to worry about it. So by default, it's set to Luma channel. Luma channel is obviously the bright and dark areas. We're gonna want a bit of contrast. So let's go ahead and zoom into the portion that I wanna track. Let's just say I wanna track this front of the building. I'm just going to make a selection on the front of this building and I'm gonna leave it on perspective. Even though the perspective doesn't change too much, it does change a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on perspective. But if yours doesn't change at all, you can always use one of these other options that will be a little bit easier on your computer. I'm gonna go ahead and click track to end to go ahead and start the track. All right, that only took a few seconds to track. Let's go ahead and take a look at the track points. It looks like it's holding pretty well. 
one thing you can do is you can actually look at the little splines and as long as you don't see any crazy jumps or anything it's probably a pretty good track once i have a track that i like i'm going to go ahead and click on the planar tracker and i'm going to create a planar transform there that drops down a planar transform i can go ahead and disconnect this planar tracker and move it out of the way you can also delete it if you don't want it and reload this media in node so now that i have this planar transform what this planar transform is going to do is this is going to be the transform information that i will use to make a roto stick to the front of that building so after the media in node i'm going to hit shift space and i'm going to type in roto because i want to bring in my cb roto tool you can also use one of the other methods that we described earlier in this video if you don't want to download the roto tool I'm going to take the output of the planar transform and I'm going to plug it directly into the roto node. And now I'm going to go ahead and load the roto node into the actual viewer here. I'm going to click off because I don't want the polygon to connect to anything just yet because I actually have to plug it into this planar transform, but not as a mask. I want to plug it in as an input. So let me show you what I mean. If I go ahead and I click a polygon node with nothing selected, it just drops it off into the node panel, which is exactly what I want. Just like we did earlier, if I take this output and I drop it directly into the planar transform, it's going to drop it in as a mask which is not what I want I don't want to mask the effect of the planar transform I want to use the actual effect of the planar transform so what I need to do is either hold down the alter option or use my right mouse button to grab the output of the polygon and drop it directly onto the planar transform then select input you notice that it all turns back to the normal color and that's letting me know that it is now ready for me to begin building my mask. So I can come over here and go ahead and start making a nice selection on the actual portion that I want to mask out. I'm going to just use the front face of this building and once I connect it and it's going to turn red letting me know that I now have a mask selection made. I can get a little bit closer here and I can move these around if I need to make sure that it's right on the edge where I want. All right, that looks pretty good. This portion over here isn't really as important because another mask will overlap with it. Now let's go ahead and hit the preview button or the space bar and see how well it sticks. So as it's running through, we can see that it sticks really well. In fact, we probably won't need to do anything because the front of the building does not change too much in perspective. Okay, that holds really well. And if we come into the CB Roto, and we turn the roto assist off, now we can see that we've cut out the front of the building. So step one of this process is now complete. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the roto assist back on. We can use this planar transform information, the track data, to also do anything that's on the front of the building. The problem with this antenna up here though is that it's not really on the front of the building. It looks like it's on the front of the building, but it's actually further back on the building. So there is going to be some perspective shift, but let's go ahead and try it anyways. We can go ahead and rename this polygon, hit F2, front building. And we're gonna wanna rename these masks in case we have to move them later. With this mask selected, I'm gonna go ahead and drop another polygon tool, but I'll notice that I'm actually not on the very zero frame. So let me go back to the next frame and I'm gonna come over here and right click and I'm gonna remove the polygon. What you do when you remove that polygon is you actually remove any animation that's already taken place. You'll notice that I dropped down a keyframe because I wasn't quite on the very first frame. So you do have to be careful when you're using the polygon tool because a lot of times it will be set up to start animating immediately. So let's go ahead and zoom in here and I'm just gonna drop two points on here. That's probably all I'm gonna need. I wanna drop it right in the center of that item and then I want to come over to the border width. I'm actually going to use the border width to control the mask. So if I increase the border width without holding the command you'll notice that it's way too big. That would be great if we wanted to include some of the sky but I don't want to include any of the sky because maybe I want to do a sky replacement later. So I'm going to hold down the command or the control button if you're on a PC and I'm just going to slowly decrease the border width until I get the exact size that I'm looking for and let's say that that's pretty good maybe just a little bit skinnier and right about there looks pretty good. All right, so now we've included that antenna, but the only problem is if we come to the very last frame, we'll notice now we can see how much the perspective has changed. So let's come back to the zero frame again. Let's come to that very first polygon and let's go ahead and right click and hit animate because we know we're gonna have to animate this mask. Now let's come all the way to the very end. Here's one of the issues with the polygon node. So you would probably think that you could go ahead and make a selection and move this, but unfortunately we're still on the click append. So if I click anywhere, even if I'm trying to click and make a box, 
what it's gonna do is it's gonna start dropping down more points. So I'm gonna go ahead and Command Z to undo that. And I'm actually gonna come over here to Modify Only. You can also use the hotkey of Shift M. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that, select the polygon, and I wanna move this over. So if I move it over to the right, I can now move it directly where it should be. So what we've done is we've gone from the first frame all the way to the last frame and we've moved it over. So as long as everything is moving completely the exact same throughout the movement, ideally it would be completely lined up on all the in-between frames. Of course, we know that's not gonna work that way. So let's go ahead and half it to maybe about frame 90 and we'll see how far off it is. So our goal is to use as few movements and create as few keyframes as possible. So we can see that we're gonna need to move it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it back over a little bit here. And then I wanna continue to half it. So if I went to 90, let's go somewhere in the center here and then check it again. I think that actually works pretty well. So let's go to the first quarter and that looks pretty good as well. So now if we were to preview it, we can see that it appears that that mask is holding quite well Okay, so now we have the first part of the building. Let's go ahead and take care of the rest of the building. So this portion right here, we actually don't need to roto it out by itself because it, it never touches the sky and everything that touches the sky is what needs to actually be rotoed out. So we can just do a garbage mask to actually mask that part out and we can track that mask really easily. But what we do need is we will need to mask this portion out here on the top these two antennas, and then of course this side, which we know that side is going to change in perspective. So therefore we're probably gonna to have to scale that. So in order to handle this side over here, we don't necessarily wanna use the track data from the front. It's going to be off because these are at different planes. So they're gonna move at different speeds and that's how parallax works. Things that are further away from the camera will move slower than things that are closer to the camera. So let's go ahead and find a point on this that we can actually track. So I'm probably gonna use this antenna because this antenna looks like it's gonna be really easy to track because there's quite a bit of contrast. I wanna go all the way back to the zero frame because this is where I wanna start. And instead of using the planar tracker, this time I'm gonna use a point tracker. So with nothing selected, shift space to bring up my quick tool select, type in the word tracker. This time I wanna use the actual point tracker. So go ahead and hit add, plug the media in into the tracker and then load the tracker into your viewer. Now to move this tracker around, I'm actually gonna use this little green or red square that's in the upper left hand corner. I'm gonna go ahead and move that around. And let's go ahead and move it to something that has a lot of contrast. I could use this building portion right here, right where that gets a little bit darker. I think that might work. We'll go ahead and try it. Tracking is definitely one of those things that you have to just try and don't be afraid to abandon a tracker if it's not working. Sometimes it's easier just to track a new point that works out better than it is to actually manually fix the track itself. So we'll see how this one works out with the tracker selected. If we come over here to the right, really, we don't need to worry about any of this stuff right now. We're just going to track forward. Let's go ahead and track it forward all to the end. Keep an eye on it. You see that there's a couple jumps in there. We may have to fix those. We can tell that kind of looks like an EKG reading, which is not ideal. Let's go ahead and go to the beginning and let's see what we need to fix. All right, we see one coming up. Let's see. So in order to fix it, simply just grab that track and bring it down so it's nice and smooth. And you can either go frame at a time or you can go to wherever your problem areas are. Here's another problem area. Let's go ahead and drag it, drag it back down. You can also just simply scroll on your timeline to go to where the problem areas are. And you can just fix these one by one. This is a relatively easy fix. There's a lot of times where you'll track it and it will not be this easy. Sometimes you will need to actually just find a new track point. So we can see that the track is definitely messed up here at the end. For whatever reason, Maybe it's too blurry in that one photo. So let's go ahead and just bring it back down. You can also delete these track points and you can try and retrack it from your problem point, but sometimes this is a little bit easier just to go ahead and fix it manually. All right, and that's the last frame. All right, so now that our track data is fixed, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit and let's take a look at it. Now, it's, it might not be absolutely perfect because you're gonna have the camera maybe hitting some bumps and some wind so it's gonna move around a little bit, but that looks like it's gonna be okay for what we're gonna be doing. If for whatever reason you need an even smoother tracker, then just keep finding things that you can track. And then of course, if the tracker isn't working, then just ditch the tracker altogether. Just hand animate the roto and you may have a better result. And there are several times where that is going to be necessary. All right, I'm just going to remove this. I don't necessarily need it for anything. I've already completed the tracker information. Now I'm gonna go ahead and load the viewer back into it. 
I'm gonna bring in a new CB Roto node because I wanna show you how to merge CB Roto nodes in the future. Go ahead and shift space, type in the word Roto, bring in another CB Roto, and I'm going to plug the media into that tool and I'm gonna load that one up. You see it's red. This time I don't want it to be red. Maybe I want it to be blue. And I'm gonna turn the opacity down just a little bit. So in order to use point tracker data, the easiest way is to just bring in the polygon node. And before I actually build my polygon mask, I'm going to connect the center of that polygon node to the tracker data. So let's go to the center of the polygon node and I'm going to right click, come down to connect to, tracker one, tracker one path and position. That will now move the center of this polygon node to the actual point that we track. Now you might need to click off and click back onto the polygon in a couple times until you actually get your crosshairs. And now you can go ahead and build your mask. I'm gonna mask out this front portion by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and come down here and I'm actually going to drag this all the way down because I'm going to make my text a little bit big. And I'm gonna come over here to the right because I wanna overlap a little bit and create this mask like so. So let's go ahead, get a little bit closer, maybe jump on the polygon. If I need to move these, I can. All right, and that looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and play and see how well it tracks. So the part that we really wanna pay attention to is actually up here. We can see that it's extending past a little bit. So it is changing in perspective. Let me go ahead and stop that, come to the very last frame. And one thing we will need to do is we will need to scale it down in the X. So this is X and up and down is Y. So we know we're gonna need to scale this poly a little bit. What we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna select all the points. And because I need to scale it in the X, I'm gonna start over here on the left-hand side. This is the side that I wanna scale it towards. So I'm gonna hold down the X button on my keyboard and then I'm going to use my left mouse button to click and drag and I'm gonna drag to the direction that I wanna scale it. So there I, you've seen that I've scaled it back inward and now it all lines up pretty good. And so again, we wanna check the center. Let's just go ahead and check the center, see that it's lined up. We could probably scale it in a little bit more. So X is going to constrain the scale to the X just a little bit, that'll work. Now let me go ahead and check the front quarter. Front quarter looks good and the back quarter looks good enough. Okay, so now I want to view both of those masks together. Let me go ahead and unplug the original CB Roto tool from the media out and I'm just going to merge the output of the CB Roto onto the other output of the CD Roto. Now let's go and take a look at what we see. We don't actually see anything and that is because only one of them is showing. So if we go into the merge node and we change the apply mode from normal to either darken or lighten, we should be able to see both colors together. Now we'll notice that they are a little bit darker than they normally would be and that is because in order to see both colors superimposed, we're gonna have to choose either darken or lighten. So if we, we could also do screen, but then that's going to brighten up the entire image, which looks kind of weird. So I found that the lighten or the darken work the best where they only lighten or darken the actual colors and not the actual footage behind it. So now we can go ahead and connect the merge to the media out, jump over the edit tab. We can see exactly how well our masks are holding to the track. Okay, that only took a few seconds because again, all it's doing is it's compositing those colors on top of your footage. So let's go ahead and hit P and we'll take a look at the masks. So the masks seem to be holding onto the track really well. So that's good. Let's go ahead and jump back into the fusion and we'll go ahead and finish it up. So I need to do these antennas. We would do the antennas the exact same way that we did the antennas over there. I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quickly and then we'll go ahead and pick up after I'm done with those antennas. We can see that it looks like it matches up really well. So now we just have these last two bits. We have the side here, we have this last antenna. Let's go ahead and create a brand new Roto node. And this time we're actually not gonna use any of the positional data. I'm gonna show you how to do this completely hand tracking with no track whatsoever. So shift space, type in Roto, bring in another CB Roto tool. I'm just going to use my Alt or Option key and I'm going to create a pipe router here just so I don't have to go all the way back up. And I'm just gonna pipe this directly in. Again, it's red. Let's go ahead and click on this roto and let's change this to maybe a green. And I'm gonna turn the opacity down just a little bit. Okay, we wanna make sure that we are on the zero frame because I am going to animate it from zero. I'm going to zoom in here and let's go ahead and just start making a mask. And I'm actually gonna start this mask right here on the corner where the other one finishes. 
I'm just gonna come down to the end here, come down a bit. And this can overlap, that's fine, because again, this mask, it'd be a little bit nicer if it overlaps with the other mask next to it. And we can even create another point here just to make a little bit more overlap. This will be a little bit weird. We will have to change the scale just a little bit, but it'll be fine. Okay, so that works out pretty well. Let's go ahead and go to the very end frame here. Obviously, it's really far off, and the reason it's so far off is because there was no track data. We didn't use the track data that we've been using, so now we actually have to animate it. Right click over here, make sure that the animation is already set. If you see the word animate, it was not animated to begin with. As long as it doesn't say animate, then that's good. It will automatically set a key when you move this. So the way that we're gonna move this is I'm going to select all of the points and I'm gonna drag all of the points over. We'll notice that it's off a little bit in, the, in a rotation. So let's go ahead and just line it up as best we can with one side. So we can actually twist this. So if you hold down the T button, it will twist or rotate it. So if you hold down T, you can actually rotate it until it matches horizontally with the side of the building. So let's go ahead and get close and see exactly where our point should be. This, our point should be up a little bit. So let's go ahead and scale it until it matches up to right around here. So in order to scale it, we wanna scale it in the X. I'm gonna to go to hold down X. I'm gonna grab this corner over here and I'm going to scale it outward to right about there maybe. And we can see that there is definitely some overlap and that is because we rotated it. At this point, grab this corner and I'm just gonna drop it directly onto there and I'm gonna match this one up a little bit here and let's see how well that holds when we go ahead and play it somewhere in the center. So if I jump into the center area, we'll see that it is not holding at all. And so this is where you can see the power of using the actual track data. This would have been a lot easier if we would have used the track data because apparently the speed actually changes somewhat in the drone shot. It's not a consistent speed. So let's go ahead and go down to the center and we'll go ahead and move this again. You can see we're, we're doing pretty good for scale. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good you wanna stay away from having to move these points as much as possible, but I think we can get away with it here. Let's go ahead and check the back quarter. Back quarter's off again, but the scale looks pretty good. So let's go to the front quarter. We know the front quarter is gonna be off because for some reason it actually really speeds up in the front half. So let's go ahead and move the corner. So this scale changes a bit, So, but instead of scaling it, I'm just going to bring the points down. So let's check the front half. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and merge this in again. And again, let's go ahead and change this to maybe a darken. And you can always make these completely opaque if you want. That will help preserve the color for when you're viewing it. So something like this. And the nice thing is you can see it darkens where you have overlap, which is good because you wanna make sure that you are encompassing the entire building. All right, so now we have everything all tracked. We've got all of the colors, but we're not done there. Obviously we need to convert this back into a roto. So let's go into each one of these roto assists and we'll go ahead and turn them off. So we're just turning all of the roto tool that I built, we're just turning them so that they will convert everything into alphas. Now we need to go into these merge nodes and these need to get turned back to normal. And that's so that it will correctly apply the alpha channels and not try to just cut out in some kind of weird fashion. All right, so now we can see that we have our building front side. We have the antennas. We can go ahead and scroll through here. We see that the side of the building actually changes in perspective. That's good that our masks seem to conform to it pretty well. We've already checked all of the masks for accuracy. It's pretty good. But now we have to take this cutout and superimpose it on top of our actual media footage. So we already showed how we can do that. I'm gonna hold down the option or alt key and I'm gonna create a new pipe router. And I'm just going to get rid of this and I'm going to plug this pipe router into this other pipe router. And that's just so I can free up that media node. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that tracker. We don't need trackers once we've already used them for what they were worth. These merges are just combining in order to make this one combined mask, and that's fine. But so after that, I need to superimpose this as the foreground onto my media, which will be the background. So after this merge node, let's go ahead and create another merge node by bringing in a merge node. Now you'll notice that right now it's set that this merge node, which is the combination of these masks, is set to the background. I don't want that. I can either 
unplug this and put it in directly into that green output, or in this mass node, I can simply hit Command or Control T, which will swap it to the foreground. So now I need to take this mass node and I want to plug this mass node into the merge. Now this is going to look pretty ugly, so I'm just going to move this up a little bit, create a new pipe router by holding Option or Alt, so just so it looks a little bit more organized. Maybe bring another one in here. So what we're doing is we're taking this media in now, it's in the background, so if we superimpose these two, it doesn't look like anything has changed. But in reality, obviously all of our cutouts are on top of this. So since this is our background, let's go ahead and bring in a text node. If I bring in a text node, and I wanna plug this text node into the background and have the foreground on top. So I'm going to take this text node and I'm gonna drop it into the pipe router, which is a really handy way to actually use a pipe router. So that way I don't need to drag it all the way over here and drop it into this merge node, which would merge it into these rotos, which we definitely don't want. So let's come into this text and we'll go ahead and move it up a little bit. Maybe we'll go ahead and size it up just a little bit. And we'll just type roto. All right, that's pretty much it for Roto 101. Hope you guys got something out of this. I hope you guys learned something new, perhaps. If you guys are interested in the CB Roto tool, it's absolutely free. Just head on over to cbsuper.com, download the CB Roto tool, upload that into your macros folder, and you guys can start using it if you like. If you guys like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, leave any comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.